The man who orchestrated rugby union's poaching of Roosters young gun Joseph Swali'i has described league's reaction to the coup as thuggish. Rugby Australia chairman Hamish McLennan says he'd love Swali'i in a gold jumper right now and hinted other defections could be on the cards. Rugby might be the game they play in heaven, but Joseph Swali'i's signing has landed them in a hell of a fight with rugby league. Sue Ali has been accused of taking the $6 million soft option. You don't think it's a money-based decision? No, I don't think. I think the, the money's good. I think he's optimising his position for where he's at at the moment, but he's always dreamt of being a Waratah and a Wallaby. Do you believe that? Like, is that what he told you? Or, do you, or is that where have you got that from? He, he told me that. Is it easy money for him, as Peter Volandi said? Oh, look, I think that's a cheap shot. And I think for him, he's an athlete that's worth it. The idea that the NRL or the Roosters should boot Suali'i now has rugby excited. We'd take him straight away. We made a good profit this year. Um, we'll make 100 million bucks out of the Lions. We'll make another 100 million out of the World Cup. Everything's heading in the right direction. So we could afford to take him now and, and we'd be delighted to take him earlier if league didn't want him. And McLennan says the attacks on Suali'i's character are out of order. The reaction's been quite thuggish in terms of how they've treated him and, and what they're saying about him and his manager and the negotiations. Here's a young kid who's bettering himself and he's going to get paid good money. Good on him. I think we're a bit more player-centric in rugby union and, and a bit more pro-player. I, I wouldn't be talking to one of my key guys like that. And I think it's a bit unfair, but that's life. I think he'll be a stronger guy because of it. Have you personally reached out to Joseph to see if he's OK with the, with the reaction? Yeah, I dropped him a note last night and, you know, I, I hear he's doing fine. Today, an insight into the thought behind the rugby raid. There are a lot of union players that have already been poached for league, so we're just going to get a few back. I've been looking around everywhere for the whiteboard with the hit list. Who's on it? Oh, look, there are a few on the list, but uh, again, we've got great kids coming through our ranks, grassroots and so forth, but there are a few league people. Even as of yesterday, there's one unnamed person out of league who's put their hand up already, so to come across, so that's going to be interesting. Come on, got to give me more than that. Can't now, I can't. You'll be the first to know. Danny Weidler, Nine News. Well, could Rugby Australia have the NRL's best halfback on their hit list? Nathan Cleary today wouldn't rule out a move to rugby in the future, but he's more focused right now on the Panthers, who face their biggest test in three years. Admiring Bondi Beach alongside Rooster, Sam Walker. I was going to start some rumours. <laughs> Thought that might be the case, but um, no, nah, definitely uh, happy to be out west. Nathan Cleary crossing town to launch this year's City to Surf. So I don't think I'd be real good over 14k, so um, might come down and watch this year, but I don't know if I'll be taking part. But could he do the runner and follow his idol, Dan Carter, down the road to rugby union? I have great respect and admiration for, for union players, particularly growing up in New Zealand. You know, it's so big over there and always keep a keen eye. At the moment, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Um, somewhere down the track, maybe. A Panther until at least 2027. Cleary's immediate problem, the Premier's form. I think it's been a relatively disappointing start to the year, but um, you know we've lost both our games by a point, so that's something we've probably got to address is um, closing out those close games and, and sort of you need to win those tight ones. Despite winning just one match in 2023, a three-peat remains the focus. It's a challenge, but that's something that we've got to walk towards and, and be excited about. And we're at the stage now where we, yeah, we have to evolve. Been playing really well for a long period of time, but you've got to have that sort of evolution and, and keep trying to get better. And with some more field goal practice, Cleary could produce more magic like he did against Parramatta. Do you ever try from specific distances in that two-point range? No, nah, usually, honestly, just from in front. It's probably a good reminder to actually, you know, practice from different um, places for different scenarios. Zach Bailey, Nine News. Clint Gutherson won't be forced out of the fullback role at Parramatta, but that doesn't mean the Eels aren't on the hunt for another number one. Today, Brad Arthur opened up about their pursuit and how Gutherson would love to play alongside the likes of James Tedesco. Brad Arthur has set the record straight on Clint Gutherson. We haven't had any discussions about moving him to the centres. But Parramatta has three spots available in their squad and money to burn in the salary cap. Arthur admits he would still like to add another fullback to their ranks. Would we be advantaged if we can get a um, someone off the bench that's got a bit of X factor? If Gutho was to go down, who replaces him? You know, at stages last year and, and probably in, at the back end of the year, Gutho had a, a broken hand that no one knew about and played the last four or five games with a broken hand and we had Jake there on the bench 
in case of an emergency where Mitchell would have to go to fullback. That's not what's best for our team, moving Mitchell around. The coach insists the captain is safe and has been involved in the discussions. He's often joked, if you can get me Teddy, I'll play in the centres, but um, you know, that's just his attitude around doing what's best for the team because he just wants to win. The one deal everyone thought was done was Mitchell Moses, but he's still yet to put pen to paper. If they haven't told me that, we obviously don't have his signature. You know, once it gets signed off on, um, we'll know about it, but I'm only planning on him being here. South Sydney trained under the watchful eye of club great George Piggins today. They'll be taking all the advice they can get. Up against Melbourne this Friday, who have beaten the Bunnies seven out of the past eight times they've played. Maybe we sort of got to get that out of our heads that they're, they're Melbourne and we just got to play our footy and focus on ourselves. Danica Mason, Nine News.